Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I want to talk about probability distributions again, and I want to talk about some notation that we'll use when we look at that. Um, the notation S and F are success and failures, because there's two possible outcomes we can talk about success and failure, and that denotes the two possible categories of all outcomes. We're going to use P and Q to denote the probabilities of S and F. So the probability of a success we say is P. Probability of a failure is Q, which denotes the probability of failure of 1 in the end trials. So let's say that the probability of success is 60%. That's P is 60%, then Q would be 40%. Those two things add up to 100%. N denotes the fixed number of trials. X denotes the specific number of successes that we're looking for in those N trials. And the probability of X denotes the probability of getting X successes among the N trials. So we'll have to do a few examples for that to make sense to you. But I want to talk about sampling without replacement. I've talked about this a little and I want to mention it again. Usually when we say if we don't replace, then the events do, are not independent. So like if I was talking about if you take a card out of a deck of cards and if you put the card back in, then each time you draw a card you have a fresh start but if you don't replace then we would say that those events are no longer independent because having lost one of the cards changes the probability for the next event but we can consider those events to be independent if n which is the number of fixed trials is less than five percent of the total number of the population that you're working out with so the number of your, if the number of your trials is less than 5% of the entire population that you're working with, then it's okay. We can, we can say that they're independent even without replacement. Okay, here's an example um, of that. If you have polled 1,200 people and you have some data based on these 1,200 people and you want to select a few of those subjects without replacement and look at them, you could still consider those independent if you were looking at fewer than 60 people, because 1,200 times 5% is 60. So as long as the number of people you're looking at is less than 60, we can still say that that's an independent event. Those are independent events. The binomial probability formula is here. And again, N is the number of fixed trials. X is the number of successes in that trial. Probability is of success is P of failure is Q. So you can see that and you're welcome to use that. But I also have, sh have done a video showing you how to uh, use your calculator for binomial probabilities. So that's what I would suggest that you use. Here's an example. Assume that it has been determined that 62% of the population that own a cell phone have some sort of data usage restriction. What is the possibility that if we choose seven cell phone owners exactly two of them will have a data restriction. So give the values of n, x, p, and q from the given scenario. The number of, the n is the number of trials, and we're going to look at seven cell phone users. So there we go, seven. Exactly two of them will have a data restriction. That's what we we're asking. x is the number of successes. So we're, success for us is choosing somebody who has a data restriction. So x equals two. Probability of success, 62%. The probability of failure then is 100 minus 62, which is 38, or 1 minus 0.62, which is 0.38. So we're going to do seven trials, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I have seven listed here, and we want two of those to have, um, to say yes, we have a data restriction. So couldn't we just do this, 0.62, which is the success, success, and then five failures, would that give us our answer? And the answer is no, it would not. Because if we are talking about two people in seven, we're not saying it has to be the first two. It could be five failures followed by 0.62. It could be three failures, two successes, and two more failures. So when we're talking about exactly two, there's a lot of different arrays we can look at where two of those things are successful. So we can't just do this. So this is... Definitely no, we can't do that. So just so you know, some people try to do that. You have to use this formula or the calculator, and I'm going to go through the steps again for a calculator um, 
on the TI-36X Pro. Remember to clear your data. That's a good step always. If you're just looking for one thing, like exactly two, you're going to do second function data, go over to distribution, scroll down to binomial PDF. It's going to be flashing single, and you're just going to hit enter. And then enter N is 7 because that's the number of trials. The probability of success for this problem is 0.62, and X is 2. That is looking for exactly two successes. So try that on your calculator to make sure you can get that answer, 0 0.0640. It's a pretty low probability, right? Because most of the time we're saying 62% or over half would have. So to find only 2 out of 7 would be sort of unusual, but not in it's not less than 5%, so it's not completely unusual. If you're going to do um, something where it says for um, how, what's the probability of finding less than three people that have data, well, that's different, right? Because less than three means zero, one, or two people. So then you have to clear the memory, go into data, enter zero, one, and two, then go to second function data over to distribution, and binomial CDF, that adds up. So that would add up the zero, the one, and the two. Then you want to scroll over to list, press enter, seven trials, 62% success, and click enter, and you're going to see at the bottom of the list that added up 0, 1, and 2 to get 0 0.0782. So I did a video on this already. You can watch that, or you can just try it from what I have listed here to get those answers. All right, we'll do another example in the next video. Have a great day.